Hello everyone, my name is Daniel and I'm back with a quick blog post to cover some new insights. Uh, the two topics I'm going to discuss are the definition of the last day and then the three days of darkness which I've seen floating around. So let's dig in. Uh, I was doing a search and I actually saw another YouTuber, I, I forget where, talking about the last day. And uh, it turns out that if you search for the phrase, the last day, it occurs exactly eight times throughout the entire Bible. And seven of those times are in the book of John, where it's talking about they'll raise us up at the last day. Uh, so that's when the resurrection is going to occur. And he says that um, four times. Um, and then in the last day, that great day of the feast, so John defines it as the last day of tabernacles. And then, uh, of course, we have two more in John 11, where it's the resurrection at the last day. And, of course, judge him in the last day. So we have judgment on the last day uh, and resurrection. Uh, and it's defined as the last day of tabernacles by John. And in Nehemiah, it is also defined as the last day. This is the only place in the Old Testament where it is defined. Also, day by day, from first day unto the last day, they read the book of God, and they kept the feast seven days. And on the eighth day was a solemn assembly, according to the manner. That's the Atzeret. So, uh, you know, eight exact matches for eight days, these are amazing um, outcomes, uh, just very unlikely, but nevertheless, he is in the numbers and the words. So let's talk about three days of darkness. So there are many people teaching or that we should be expecting three days of darkness, and they like to um, go into some of the Roman Catholic doctrine teaching. I don't want to go to the Roman Catholic, but uh, just so that you know what we're, I'm talking about here. Uh, basically, they say that darkness will cover the entire earth for three days and three nights, uh, and they think it's a prophecy of the future. And, of course, they have holy beeswax candles that will be the only source of light. Um, but they also base it from the book of Exodus. In the book of Exodus, you can look at all biblical history as potential prophecy of future because there's nothing new under the sun, he teaches in similitudes, um, you know, as I've outlined in the past. All the parables and stories, they all tell us information about how things are going to unfold. So that when we look at Exodus, that's a model for the future judgment day. And so in Exodus 10, verse 21, uh, the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward heaven so that the darkness may spread over the land of Egypt a palpable darkness, a darkness you can feel or touch. So it's not just someone turn off the lights. There's actually like a thickness to it. And verse 22, which is interesting, because it's the 22nd day of the seventh month. So Moses stretched out his hand toward heaven, and total darkness covered all the land of Egypt for three days. And no one could see anyone else. And for three days, no one left his place. Yet all the Israelites had light in their dwelling. All right? So here is the palpable darkness, but there's an exception. The Israelites, who is that? That is representative of the church, his body, the people who are raptured. We will have light in our dwellings, and who is the light? Yeshua is the light, and we will be with him. Um, so I expect that this will start on October 9th, except a day as a year principle applies. So I expect three years of darkness caused by nuclear winter. Uh, so on the surface, uh, Revelation, let's look at Revelation, because this, is, I think, supports that understanding. Uh, on the surface, Revelation 11.3 appears to describe the clothing of the two witnesses, like clothed in sackcloth, for 1,260 days. But when you combine it with Revelation 6.12, it's clear that the sackcloth applies to the sun. 
or the days. Uh, the sun being representative of days. So he said, then I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and sixty days clothed in sackcloth. The days can be clothed in sackcloth instead of the witnesses. And why do I know that? It says, I beheld, and when he had opened the sixth seal, which is the uh, sudden destruction where everyone ends up going to their bunkers, and lo, there was a great earthquake, that's the nukes, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair. So it's the sun that's connected to sackcloth. And the moon became as blood. So there is a picture of what that would be like. It's like a forest fire. Everything looks red like out of the apocalypse, which is exactly what's going to happen. So it is hypothesized that over 95% of sunlight could be blocked out uh, when you, you know, from basically not entering the Earth, caused by nuclear winter. This is because dust particles are sent so high up in the atmosphere, much higher than the clouds, that they can't rain down on, on the Earth. And of course, the two witnesses have the power to stop the rain. Uh, so it could not rain for three years. Or, uh, and so one of, that's one of the side effects of this, is it disrupts the, the cycle. So, of course, without... Sunlight, plants cannot photosynthesize and will die. It will be a lot colder than normal. It's not going to be as cold as some predictions have said because they didn't factor in the oceans moderating the temperature. But you could expect maybe 10 to 20 degrees colder than normal, which makes a really big difference. Uh, so then we have Revelation 8 to 12, which confirms this. And a fourth angel sounded, and a third part of the sun was smitten, and a third part of the moon, and a third part of the stars. So this tells you that something is between us and all of the bodies in space that's doing the darkening. Now there are several ways to interpret this. Uh, one is that 33% of all light is reduced everywhere, right? It's an even spread. The other is that one third of the land, there is 70% darkened, and one-third, 50%, and one-third, maybe 5%. And this map here shows a simulation of what nuclear winter would look like, and you can see that one-third is very, very dark. So uh, that's lots of different ways that that uh, could be fulfilled. Um, and, of course, it would last three years is within the realm of how long a nuclear winter could last. So having a darkness that is palpable indicates that it's likely induced by smog and not a supernatural dimming of every heavenly body. All right, and uh, lastly, my book. Uh, oh, this image is much bigger than I expected. Um, my book is going to be available in print. It's free download right now. This is designed to give everyone who is left behind the instructions on how to save their soul uh, and how to know that Yah is real, that he predicted and declared all things in advance. Uh, and if on that day he says, depart from me, I never knew you, you who practice lawlessness, this book provides you the answers of what you might have missed uh, so that you can repent, get right, and be prepared to die. Because in the, in the immediate aftermath, a lot of people are going to die, but there's going to be a lot of people that die from the famine, the radiation, uh, the, and the starvation over the course of the next six months. So it's not an instantaneous thing for everyone. So they have some time to repent, but it is an inevitability for a whole lot of people that no matter what they do or how well prepped they are, they will not um, be able to survive with their body but they might be able to survive with their soul. So please download my book there. You can subscribe and turn on notifications to find out when this is released in paperback. I'm getting it to you as fast as I can. The uh, publisher won't allow me to post the store so you can order copies until about a week. So it's all been submitted. Everything is good to go, um, but that's just how long it takes. And in the interim, of course, you can always print it out on your printer. 
and it'll be about 50 pages if you put two pages per page front and back. All right, thank you very much. I will see you next time.